low elo legends on hideout 850 elo is like at the point where if i were to remake the rules now you might be out of low elo legends or very close to it you have to have a decent amount of experience you're probably going to have some hotkeys you probably even have some build orders down and you even have common courtesy here in the blue glhf from cubed who's playing as the spanish and then in the red we have king richard <laughs> and red says good luck have fun noob Oh, he says, I'm a noob, and he corrects himself. Wait a second. There's a big difference between saying noob and then I'm a noob. I'm... Okay, this is kicked off with a bang. Let's see if Red responds to this. Now, Koomans and Spanish could both be good on Hideout, but Hideout, we should talk about, you start with Palisade Walls, and you're on the other side of this wood line uh, from each other. And, and Blue says, we both are. Okay, I take it back. You're not even close to being out of Loey the Legend territory. Both of these players considered themselves noobs okay so this is the battle of the noobs and the one thing that's a little interesting about hideout is it gives you security but it's not security with like with, with too much to really back it up on so if you get castle dropped or night rush or archer rush the palisade walls are deceivingly weak unless you're cumans actually cumans do have more hp on the palisade walls that is a bonus that gets forgotten about a lot with them so Kumin's probably good for a close map like this because Kumin's is the only civilization that can make a second TC in the feudal age. So the strategy to go to for this, I would say, as we see a moonwalking boar in the snow, is go fast feudal, make the second TC, and then produce villagers out of both those TCs. Spanish, on the other hand, they are incredibly strong if they can go fast castle and drop a castle. And I mean, that could be offensively or defensively but if you think about it, if you really wanted to take a risk, if you really wanted to have some fun, you could just walk some villagers over here and drop a castle later on in Red's face. Um, would make it awkward for Red. But of course, there's a risk in running out. We'll have to see what they end up deciding to do. I think the safe play would be make a castle at home, like right in front of your walls there, and protect your resources. Um, hello, one inch punch. Uh, hello, hollow, hollow. We'll probably do sub 300 elo today. Oh god, blue is shooting the boar with his town center. Uh, uh, misclick the sheep. <laughs> blue tried to be fancy, weaken the boar with the TC. I mean, it worked out. Uh, there is a rotting sheep underneath that lady's dress, but uh, I guess it worked out. Oh, guys, did I not remove? The, the mod, oh no, it's a new mod. Those aren't pumpkins. I don't know. There's always these visual mods that they, they add for me, and I continue to forget to remove them. Actually, I think this one makes the scout look weird in the game. Or, or some other thing. I don't know. We'll figure that out. All right, so good job from Blue there. Good job from both players. King Richard, though, one minute of TC idle time is definitely going to hurt. I'm about to be behind by two villagers due to that. Just... You know, forgot to make villagers. And there we go. There's the drop-off. And you have the food now again. That is one of the toughest things to get used to with an Age of Empires 2 build order. Is dropping off food with the boar. If you're lazy like I am. Well, granted, I do that. But uh, I remember when I first started playing. It's just so much work. Also, Blue's sheep is like blending in with the snow here. Do you see this? <laughs> this sheep... Remember, they come in packs of two, right? So the other one must have been collected, but that one is just hiding away in the snow. The freaking snow, man. Is it cold where you guys are right now, where you're watching? I guess if this goes to YouTube later on, uh, they'll answer as well. Uh, it's currently November 16th when I'm recording this. And uh, for me, it's like 70 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So it's fairly warm here. My friends back uh, up north have been telling me it's pretty cold. So, ah, oh, there we go. Found the sheep. Sheep was blocking the house spot. All right. And to be honest with you, I'm very unsure on what these guys are going to do based on what I have seen so far. It could really be anything. And what I said at the start about how, you know, maybe these guys are out of low evil legend territory. Truthfully, I think based on the build so far, they probably still deserve to be low evil legend, but they're like, they're like a couple months from graduating, maybe. I, I don't know, depending on how much they play. 
I know there's going to be someone out there who's like, we're Louis the Legend because we actually have jobs, T90. We don't just get to play video games anymore. We've got responsibilities. So yeah, it's going to take some time. Switzerland is hot AF at the moment. How is Swit... Monday? I, I believe you're being sarcastic right now. <laughs> it's 10 Celsius in London. Okay, let's see if I can do this, guys. Remember, I was forced to do this whole Fahrenheit thing. Oh, wait, look at this. Cube says, I think you are good, XD. You are booming fast. I'm loving the convo. Absolutely loving the combo. Convo. Little does Blue know that Red has had, uh, Red has had, excuse me, two minutes of TC idle time. But this is a common strategy. It's pump the opponent up. Compliment them before you crush their hopes and dreams. 10 Celsius is 127 Fahrenheit. No, it's not. That's got to be like... And for this is probably going to be really bad. But like... Four, high 40s in Fahrenheit? And Red sees that Blue's in Feudal Age and says, You are faster, lol. Which is a fair point. The other benefit of having Hideout or Arena is that there's not a lot of pressure, which means there's lots of time for them to talk. Hmm. Okay. I gotta don't really know what the plan is here for Red. It looks like Red wants to make maybe make a second town center because the wood's there. But, oh, I can tell you what Red did. Watch this. So, you can place the farms and then get Horse Collar, then complete the farms, and the farms will benefit from Horse Collar. So he's he's being fancy here. And now we have a blacksmith. Is he gonna try and go for rams here? You for whatever reason need a blacksmith before a siege workshop in Age of Empires. We talked about this recently with the Cumans and some other uploads. Okay, now we have the wood upgrade for red. Blue got the wood and farm upgrade, but will red actually use these farms? I think we're going to see rams from red, actually. Let's look at red scouting. Red knows that blue is over here, and here come the villagers. And I guess he made the blacksmith at home and the barracks. I mean, what you can do, the uh, secondary military buildings like stables and archery ranges are dirt cheap with cumins. I don't understand why red decided to just place his farms there. It probably He probably set them to finish the tree and then go to the farms. And don't, don't try and do a TC now as well. You can't afford all this, buddy. <laughs> I love this. See, the thing is, at low elo, you don't understand the whole balance aspect. You, but you do understand what's maybe possible. And hey, maybe I'm wrong. If this were a higher elo player, they would commit to two TCs really fast. Or they would commit to the siege workshop and make rams really fast. Red's just like, you know what? I kind of want to do everything. The TC will be up at some point. The Rams I'll be able to afford at some point. But not for a while. Did I mention that Blue said, see fast you are? See, Blue complimented him again. And Blue, I believe, wants to go fast castle here. You have a market and you have a blacksmith. And something that Blue is, is doing that is a mistake on hideout. I Not really a big mistake, but it can be a big deal. Is not using the scout for the close side. You want to keep your scout active, especially if you have some type of thought that maybe, just maybe, someone's going to be aggressive. Excuse me, sorry, I just banged my mic with my hand. All right. I love Cummins at the moment. I have a new 21 pop into triple archery range build. Wow, that's a lot of ranges. So this is honestly the exact same thing we saw in that one upload of Loey the Legends the other day. And I think his name was Mayor. And there will be another upload, too. So by the time this hits YouTube, you will have already seen the uh, the Feudal Rams video and also the Nice Town I'll Take It video. Spoilers for people that are here. He wants to go Spearman and Rams. It's actually really good because having Spearman inside your Rams increases the speed, including the attack speed, just ever so slightly. And the counter to Spearman would be Archers. It's not like the opponent's going to have Archers waiting normally. Now, it's really... Funny is, Spearmen also do very little damage against Villagers, so, I mean, Blue could, in theory, fight back with Villagers. But what low elo legend player wants to click a bunch of Villagers at Rams? And what low elo legend player is not going to get stressed out by this? I think most are, as we see another Barracks. Okay. What's up, Frazier? 
Speaking of mics, did you get a new one, T90? Your voice sounds deeper, manlier. Okay, I don't know if people are trolling me, but I've had a few people tell me my voice sounds different. But it's only like one person a stream, so I don't know what's happening. And Blue, as Blue's being attacked, says LMAO WTF. As this blacksmith is getting rammed down, and he's gonna make, you're gonna make the barracks right next to Siege? Okay, he thought about that. He's like, you know what? That's not very smart. Okay, let's build it here. And Blue's just like, uh, what do I do right now? These villagers, okay, they're gonna make houses. Now, I'll tell you what you should do. It's only spearmen, right? So what you should do, is you should honestly just fight the rams back with bills. The spearman has three attack. And with Loom, you've got enough armor where they're only doing like one damage a hit. So it's actually completely fine to fight it back with villagers. The problem is clicking with villagers is tough. It's not like a military unit which auto attacks. Now, in theory, what you'd want to do behind this, if you're red, is boom out of both DCs. Only in this case, boom means do absolutely nothing because he's focusing on this boom. So yes, this is fine. This is fine if you're blue. Let's see if blue can figure this out. You got to fight with some vills as well here. Yeah, if you could have some inside the TC, also have some repairing. I mean, it's tricky. But in the end, the rams are all going to go down. Now, the eco is extremely idle for blue. And he has no way to counterattack red. Yeah, that is going to be the extent of the push for red, one would assume. But he's making... I think he has the gather point on the... Uh, oh, God, he's making militia now, too. I think he has the gather point in the siege workshop on the TC. Okay, so blue is... I mean, let's look at the idle... Uh, let's look at the worker efficiency. Okay, there's no way this stat is is accurate. It's a 70% worker efficiency for blue. I no longer trust capture aid. Oh, wait. Worker efficiency last minute. It was a 25%. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> and blue still can't believe this. Blue's like WTF L Lamamu. Instead of LMAO, it's it's Lamamu. Okay. He's mooing at the opponent now. And if blue learns anything from this game. It would be maybe don't make important buildings on the front. Yeah, that would probably be the number one thing Blue has learned. Maybe just make it back here. All right, 29 villagers for Blue, but Blue is in Castle Age. Red has gone home occasionally to create villagers out of the town centers and has a villager lead now. Blue is not going to be llama mooing much more. If he can't push this back. And now it's tough because Blue wants to go for night. Which is not bad if he's patient. If you get... So the thing about knights is knights with armor can shred spearmen. So like five spearmen versus one knight is going to be fine for the spearmen. And once you get to about two or three, with, with micro of course, which may or may not happen here, then it, it becomes tricky for the spearmen. As we now see a blacksmith for Blue because he's like, crap! I need upgrades on my knights, but he continues to lose his important buildings. This strategy is amazing. This strategy is amazing. It puts people under so much pressure. And you see the knights, they'll focus down the ram. Now, there you go. Back away into the TC. That's all good. Really good micro there from blue, honestly. And now, I, the good news here is that Spanish blacksmith upgrades do not cost gold. So you could get a bunch of blacksmith upgrades with all that food. He's, he's using the town center to help. I'm not sure about the whole man at arm addition. It will mean that the infantry will do more damage against villagers. Knights go for this ram, and Red's just like, who cares? I've got more. Knights should pull back. Okay, lost one knight. And what is happening here? Okay, Red tries to go after the blacksmith. Blue doesn't like that. His worker efficiency is still in the toilet. 25%, which is really bad. And honestly, if Red keeps this up, Red will win this game. Now you've got an army that can actually fight off villagers. And there's no stable for blue. He's lost two barracks. He's lost a blacksmith. He lost... Uh, come on, back away to the TC. Back away! Back away! I think blue might be a little frustrated right now. I love the eco APM, by the way. Because <laughs> that's blue's military. You look at the eco and military APM... It's, it's very funny to see those lopsided stats. 
So there's definitely a certain point where if you're red, you've got to think I've done enough damage to be happy with this attack. But at the same time, if you're keeping the guy off of gold, why not just continue this, right? Blue has had significant amounts of TC idle time. He's at eight minutes of TC idle time, which looks like it's nothing compared to red, but red has had two TC, so it's a little different. If red could just somehow optimize a little bit more and keep these TCs producing 50, like, I don't know, an extra minute or two, red would have a much bigger lead. And blue made the blacksmith on the front, so this is building number, like, six. It's just going to go down. And blue just can't believe it. Blue says, LMAO, mate, WTF. <laughs> and King Richard says, lol, they're having a good time right now. Mate, what are you doing to me right now? I love this because it really feels like Blue has never faced up against this before, and he can't believe this is working. Uh, King Richard's like, yo, thanks, T90, because that episode was amazing. Lord Lord Metza, I wouldn't even say Blue is salty. I think Blue just seems stunned. But I, I don't think it's fair to say Blue is salty at all. When I saw the the other game where the houses and buildings continue to be rammed down. I really thought it was a one-off thing. I didn't think we would see it really work consistently, but it seems like this Kuman play puts you under so much pressure that, you know, you're... And you've seen it here, like, you're constantly trying to figure out where to make buildings. At this point, Blue wants to drop a castle. And Blue has found the stone out here, which is probably the first really good thing that Blue did in a while. And Blue, I, I'm not sure Blue bought stone, but I'm surprised Blue has that many or that much stone. Okay, do not lose your town center here. Red's making a mistake by attacking the market. He doesn't have any protection. But Blue's making a mistake because, I mean, he barely has any vills. He needs to keep some vills inside the town center as well. Having Bod Canero will really help. But, like... Even if Blue takes this out, at what cost, man? At what cost? Okay, take it out, Garrison. Okay. Man at arms underneath the TC. <laughs> and they're continuing to attack the TC. Blue definitely thinks he's being smurfed or something right now. If you were to ask him, he would say, yeah, this guy must be higher elo than me. He's flexing on me. This is horrible. That said... And I agree, it is horrible, and it's it's hard to watch at times for poor Blue, who can't can't figure out why this is happening to him. But at least Blue will be able to drop a castle. But again, you know, the eco has just been awful. It'd be so funny if Blue tried to run over here and drop a castle. Obviously, that shouldn't work. But where's the castle going to go? Blue is producing vills, which is good. Uh, would be nice to see some of these villagers stay on food. Hey, okay, Blue doesn't have a castle hotkey, and there it is. Blue goes back. He's going to drop a castle here. And the next time Red shows up, there's going to be a town center and a castle. This will give Blue control of the gold. This will give Blue protection for the town center. Great job from Red to commit to this. There are some concerns, though, that Conquistadors... is like, Conquistadors can just shred anything in existence, especially infantry. But when you have 38 vills and you're untouched at home, I think you're going to be in a fine spot if you're red. Funnily enough, okay, that's the wrong point of view. Yeah, red finds this. Very good scouting, I have to say. I mean, I guess he auto-scouted around. Very good awareness. As I think blue should probably just pull back into his base now. Yeah, good job from blue, because obviously more military is going to go that way. But all right. What were you thinking, XDE? <laughs> Instead of XD, we've got the definitive edition now. I like Cubed. Cubed is a fun guy. Okay. So Cubed is going to go over here now and chop some wood with these bills. That's fine. King Richard is aware there's a castle there because King Richard lost the military. Now, there's not a lot stopping King Richard... From, say, upgrading the infantry and then going for capped ram. Because Kumans get capped ram and castle age. So you could switch into a boom and just extend your villager lead forever. That's fine. But you also, if he wants to be aggressive, he could just continue doing the same thing. And check this out. Now you notice, he has a lot of hills. But the eco approach hasn't really been there. 
He didn't get the Castle Age Wood upgrade. He didn't go for Horse Color at all this game. So it's really been an aggressive style from him. But the aggressive style, I think, is fine. Blue would need to have a lot more than just one conk to be able to stop capped rams. You would need to have... I want to say eight conquistadors, even against five regular rams. But capped ram is tricky. Oh, wow. That shot completely missed. There we go. Finally getting some hits. And the sad thing about conks is that they're so expensive. So yes, they're very strong, but pike ram is quite good against them. If Blue had his own siege right now, if he had mangonels, he would be okay, but I don't think he's going to have the time for that. The red really making use of the cumin bonuses, and Blue's like, okay, we're going to need to repair this bad boy. Ops into the castle. Ops out of the castle. And I just don't think a low elo player is going to be able to micro efficiently in these situations. I think, I think Blue is just going to lose so much here. We'll see, though. If the castle needs to be repaired, villagers also need to attack the rams. This is deja vu at this point, right? We've seen this all before. Except it was with the town center in Feudal Age. <laughs> Wait a second. Is Blue holding on? Wait, what? How? Why did I doubt? Cubed. Cubed takes out the rams, takes out the infantry. Castle will stay up, and it's 32 villagers versus 41. Blue has done such a good job here to stay alive, despite an awful eco KD. Regular KD is why the score is so high. 64 kills, 17 deaths. Listen, don't repair the whole thing. Don't waste all your stone. And Blue says, you're Toral. Which I'm pretty sure is meant to say, you're Troll. We'll see if King Richard 3483 agrees with that or responds to that. I think Cubed might be confusing King Richard 3483 with King Richard 3834. Uh, there's a lot of King Richards out there. All right, Kong, see the Vill. Vill goes down. Do the Vills not have Loom? Oh my god, the Vills don't have Loom. Walked forward and a wolf could have killed those villagers. All right, so the problem with, uh, with Kongs... Because there's not a lot of weaknesses to them besides their cost, but um, if something like a pikeman hits them, they get shredded because there's bonus damage for the pikes, right? Like something like ram pike is really good because if they're hitting your rams, then your your pikemen are getting really good kills. I think the the biggest thing that helped blue in this game was getting bodkin arrow. Like I thought it was kind of silly when I saw him getting a bodkin arrow for the TC, but it really paid off. How, what is Red up to at home? Okay, Red is producing out of the town centers. But considering the Vil KD is 13 to 3, and there's been more town centers for Red, I think he would have hoped that there'd be, you know, a bigger advantage for him. And he's just going to make more rams! And he's going to go skirms this time as well. Okay, Blue needs to recognize this is coming again, and Blue needs to do one thing. What is that one thing, chat? And if someone says murder holes, I swear. Oh my god, he just bought and sold a bunch of stuff, and he's going to go for a castle. Also, I think my capture age is not working properly anymore. Because I just clearly saw he used the market, and it's not popping up anymore. I don't know, is there a way? Sorry, guys, they updated it, and it screwed up the text at the top, too. I have to ask them about that. Unfortunately, when they update the main capture age, the T90 capture age gets delayed. But yeah, that's definitely not the first time he's used the market. Okay. Not murder holes. That was not what I was thinking. Though murder holes would actually help a little bit. One siege workshop and one or two mangonels. If someone's going to ram push you, if you have one or two mangonels behind the castles, there's no way. But he just said, let's go two castles. And he continues to poke his head out here to see what's going on. He can't see that that's not being built yet. But he sees there. They saw the rams, though. So yeah, Blue just got a relic. That's why the priest was there. And yeah, that's a that's a mod I forgot to remove. They changed. They added some weird graphic mod. And as you know, there's no way for me to have any say in that, so I have to remove it. It's not bad, but it's it's the AOE one priest. So. 
just a graphic thing. 46 villagers versus 47 because Red, after killing all those vills, he doesn't care about his eco at home. For some reason, he wants to go for the attack. All right. So you've got two castles with Bodkin. We've got a few conquistadors, not many. Um, Blue's going out to get the relics. I mean, if Blue holds from this attack, Blue will have three relics at least. And Red's tossing away a lot of res. Choo choo! Here come the Rams, Pikemen, Skirms as well. Skirms with no upgrades. The double castle fire will really help here. Plus, Blue is blocking the that area. Okay, it isn't blocking it any longer. Those palisades went down faster than I thought they would. Um, okay, now the pikemen hop out, and now it's like a really tough task for Blue, who has to use villagers. And I don't think it's going to work this time. Remember last time I didn't think it was going to work either. Somehow it did. You need to have siege. If you had siege behind here, this castle would... Like, even if this castle goes down, as Blue doesn't want to finish it, or Red doesn't want to finish it off for some reason. Um, yeah, even if this castle goes down, the next one definitely will not. I think Red's finally going to get his wish here. And now, Blue thinks, I need Siege. But the lack of preemptive thinking is going to end up being the problem here. Red has just continued this entire game with the Rams and the infantry push. And he said, how many castles? Zero castles. Blue is toast now. In theory, Mangonels could, could still clean up all of this. But, like, a big reason you, you had a chance in this game was because you could maybe push out with conks. This TC is still on fire from before. And I think Red's got enough pikemen in that ram to eject them and just go after the siege. Or he could even just use a ram and go after the siege. I'm curious to see if Blue says something. Boom. So much for the relics. This push will continue. And Blue says... GG XD, what a game. I love Cubed. There's nothing quite like watching a Loey the Legend who you can tell is just having a good time, you know? I, I feel like it's a rare quality on the internet to, to lose badly and have a really fun time. And I feel like we should make that more... That should be more the norm. <laughs> it's fun to see that. Because playing online can be stressful, you know? So sometimes you get frustrated with yourself. You can get frustrated with the opponent at times, but... Didn't happen there. We got to see the Lama Moo and the Torals. Uh, 100 kills, 28 deaths there for Blue. That looks really good, but you can see Red was ahead in uh, Eco and, and just, just control that game. Uh, Blue did have more stone and gold collected, but of course, we saw most of that go down with the Siege. And with the Castles and with the Conks all getting pushed back. What should Blue do in that situation? Add Mangonels. Yeah, wait. Telling you... Uh, like, three mangonels behind your castles, there's no chance rams ever have a chance there. It's a little different if it's siege rams, but still. Um, I, I think even one or two would have been fine. I think red probably would have focused them with the pikes. So, like, maybe three, but... You know, the first time he was able to survive, he went out here with the conch. He saw the rams. But he thought double castle would be enough. And then, of course, when he realized it wasn't enough... You want mangonels, that's just something you have to foresee. So I think it's easier to know that that's not going to work when you see it not work a bunch of times. In my case, I've experienced it and I've casted it. In Blue's case, you know, just hasn't had the longest uh, career, so to speak, and just, you know, found out the hard way. That's how it goes.